Hi there, my name is Laura and welcome to the horse riding position review video where we review riding positions from photos and videos that you send in. If you'd like to improve your riding and training, win more ribbons at your next horse show, or generally like other horsey related stuff, then you are in the right place. Now I'd like to welcome Randy. How you Hi, doing, Randy? Everybody. It's so good to see you again, Laura, and all those other smiling faces that we know will be out there and listening, watching to the replay. Yes, exactly. Randy has been coaching and certifying riding instructors for over 25 years. She's a horse industry legal consultant and expert witness and the founder of Jumping Instructors Network. And I'm Laura Kelland May, Equestrian Canada Senior Judge, Hunter Jumper Equitation and Hack, Senior Steward and Competition Coach Specialist. So today we are, as usual on Saturday mornings, we are going to go over some position reviews on photographs that people have sent in. And uh, I've got a few exercises here and also I'm going to review some of the comments that you've been leaving on my um, YouTube channel. So if you have any comments, questions, please put them in the comments because we'd love to answer your comments. Right? That's exactly right. Yeah, and so remember to share us wherever you are, because you can share this link on your channel. You can share it on your Facebook or Instagram or whatever. So share it around because we pass on a lot of great information that'll make a difference for whatever you're doing with the jumping position. Exactly. And, and, and if it's your first time here, thank you so much. Yay. And, and if it's not your first time here or if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for taking the time to watch us. We do pass on a lot of great information, even if I don't say, do say so myself. And I want you to make sure you stay tuned because there are, we do, we do, do, we do have some exercises that you can do in your next writing session that will help you definitely help you. We do do, Oh my, there are some exercises here that we do. So if you have a comment, put it in the comments. If you have some questions, put it in the questions. Love to hear from you. Right? That's exactly right. Okay, so let's go to our first person. Our first person is Emily G. That's, there we go. Emily says, if you can believe this, she says, after riding only as a young child and taking 30 years off, I've been riding back for a year and a half. I got my four, first four-year-old off the track and working hard together. Love him forever and your show. Thank you, Emily. This is a great photo. We, if you do send in photos, we really prefer that you that you try to get more of a profile view. She did send in a couple. This is kind of three quarter front shot, so we'd like to uh, try to get a full side on view so we can see the the pos position from profile. Now, Randy, do you have your magnifying glass out today? <laughs> Yes. Oh, like the guys you up. have. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so here we go. This is the first one and her name's Emily. So, first of all, Randy, you like to start at the front. Yes. Go. All right. So, I'm going to just start at the front then. Yeah. Rose, I'm watching it first. I love the expression on her face. This one. Yeah, her this rider Emily. She looks like she's having fun. Yeah, but, she looks uh, really focused, yeah, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She looks like, and so we're going to start at the horses, the front end, and you can see she's got a light uh, pr uh, crest release there, which is fine. But uh, we're going to go back further because you can see she's, you can see from there that her, it appears the thumb is not the highest point of her hand. Okay. It even might look like she's cocked her wrists a little bit. So the, okay. Emily, the thing about cocked wrist, and this could be just our imagination from what we're seeing with the photo, because this is, you look great up here. So what a cocked wrist does is it does not allow your, the influence of your rein to come through your elbow. So that's why you have a straight line from your elbow to the bit. 
If you look down at yourself, just, if, just a second, Randy. Show like this. What you mean by cock wrist? Your yes. wrist should be, you know, slightly right. rounded, like this way. That's right. So if you look down, like put like your that. elbows down. Put your elbows down by your side, Laura. Oh, then you can't see me. I'm gonna. You're gonna make me stand yeah. up. Yes. There. Good. Oh, that's perfect. All right. So the goal is there has to be a straight line from the elbow to the bit. And here's how you can tell as a rider, Laura. If you look down to where your arm joins your elbow. There yep. should be a straight line that goes down the top of your arm into your thumb. Is okay. Your, is your thumb in a straight yep. line with it? So your thumb straight line like yes. this way here. Yes. Yes. Okay. When you look down, right. Yes. Did you see it? But you see, oh, and what she's doing is. Yes. That's what she, that's what she'll be seeing. Yes. We or want it like, like this. That. Because we can't see if our fingers are closed around the reins. But oh, usually when, just see if when people are doing this, and this is that's why that's why Randy we've that's all why done. Randy has the magnifying glass. That's right. That's why Randy has it. So this is as we've said before in other shows, and this is so true. There is nothing you're doing with your riding position that we haven't done before. So we're just helping you get to the next level that you're going to, because this is what riders do. We go through a process. All right. So let me continue. Now, as we come back more, <clears throat> if we took the horse from underneath of her, this is a basic thing that we do. You would see, she would fall on her hands first, right? I agree. Her lower yeah. leg is not underneath her center of her, of her horse. You really can't see that in this picture. We do have another picture that does show that. So it, it, but, so the next one, but we can cover off some of that here. But so all she has to do, I mean, you can see she's out of the seat. Yep. She's too far in front of the saddle. Which yep. is why, you know, her elbows are coming back a little bit more, but I, I like, you know what I like That's about the seat. It's over at, top of the pommel you know, of the saddle. Yes. But look at how the strength in her riding position. So I she's know. Back, solid. She's right at the point where she's ready to go into the next thing. So Emily, what I'd like you to think of is something that Susan Harris told us about, which I thought was pretty cool. When you when you stand in your stirrups like this here, you, it locks up your whole body so that you don't have the spring you need to be riding a jumping horse because they're supposed to be springy, right? It's true even with your size, really. But uh, if you just get on a step, just a low step, you know, like a, six inches or so to that type of thing with both legs, spread your legs like you're on a horse and just that little six inches jump down. And when you land on the ground, you should spring. That's a great exercise to help you get the feeling to feel if you have spring. Right, Laura? No, that, I do that all the time. And yep. when, when I see people who are, are riding, who are quite stiff, who are landing into their knees and into their hands, kind of like what this rider's doing or pivoting on their knees, that's right. exactly what I get them to do. I get them to stand on the bottom step of the mounting block or the bottom step of whatever or off of a jump pole or just ask them to jump jump and land and right. you should be able to feel how you land into all four corners of your feet and land solid if you and plus when you land like you were saying laura when you land they sink back into their their center of gravity down yep. over their lower leg it's just a natural reaction so with this rider she's just not sinking back instead she's jumping out in front of the horse you know, jumping ahead of the motion, which is normal. Like we said, it's normal instead of sink. So at that moment, when you feel yourself leaving that saddle that much, that's when you need to be sitting back more. Your seat should not be that far out of the saddle. Yeah, her seat should be, I agree totally, that the seat needs to be over the middle mm -hmm. of the saddle. Let's see if I can right. get that here. So the seat needs to be, right now you can see here that there's seats over the pommel. Right. So it's kind of difficult to see because we're like three quarter front shot, right. but we want her seat to be closer mm -hmm. and more over the center of the saddle. And look, she looks like she has a nice thigh, you know, her thighs on. There's no question the thighs there, but she's just jumped ahead of the saddle, which yeah. is typical of people that are locking up and standing in the stirrups unconsciously. It could be. Yeah. So let's go, go down further here. Like the, we see this and we see this a lot too, that the rider is, gripping with the back of her legs exactly so her 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 um calf instead of using the inside part of her calf muscles she's using the back of her calf muscle right here and, right and so that means that she's gripping with the back of her calf muscle and pinching here with her knees That's right so and when this part goes back 
this part goes forward. That's right. And this, this is, is pretty cool what happens to riders because this horse is launching right now. So in the launch phase of the jumping position, our body gets yanked all over the place. Sometimes we don't have the control of it that we think we should have. Yeah, exactly. So to help keep your lower leg still, think of keeping the stirrup, iron, stirrup leather parallel to the girth with the weight down in your heel. That's kind of a, a like a rule of thumb we can do. Now, right. Randy, can you comment on this rider's helmet? Does it look okay? It doesn't look, it doesn't look like it fits. It looks a little bit tight. And it looks I, small, it, doesn't it? It looks small. It should be right. It should be like a baseball hat right above your eyebrows. Right here. So as I look at the photo, it just from where we're seeing at this moment in time, as we're looking at this, I would say the helmet doesn't fit. It looks like it's popped up on her head. Yeah, so we like to have uh, the recommended, oh, you know what? Oh, my helmet's out in the car. Is that the brim of the helmet should be just above your eyebrows, like this far above your eyebrows. And it looks like, it doesn't look like the hat's sitting on the back of her head, but it just looks like it's sitting on the top yeah. of her head, like it's too small. Right. And maybe we that's the shape of her head. I don't know, right. but it's, it's like, we like to see the, the helmet just come down here a little bit more. Right. Well, maybe not that far, but. Oh, uh, you don't have it on the screen. Oh, I'm perfect. It was a perfect drawing line. Yes. Yes. Right here yeah. more. Yep. And with a rider of this level, it makes her look like an even better rider because when riders come out with their helmets not fitting properly or not placed on their heads, right, it makes them look like they're like beginner type of riders because they don't have the ability to position their helmets the right way. Well, like look at this, this one, Randy. Yeah. This one looks better. It does. Helmet. Let me put the thing on because it doesn't look like the ear things are in. Ah, that's right. Yeah, see, so she's got a helmet on, it's but here. It's, it's, it's pretty loose pretty loose on her head isn't it there's there's where those things are right there and there's her ear yes so that was just and so with the helmets that have the strappy things on there or like this one or whatever you, the, it's supposed to fit around the ear like an earring not down around the neck all right so is this her again or who's this, this is the same woman yeah oh 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 hi okay now Emily i can see again. all right all right, Emily, yes, that helmet needs to be pushed forward on your head. It could just be that your strap is too loose on the bottom. We're not sure because we can't see it closer. But the front of the helmet needs to be down. So now as she's moving forward here, nice horse. I he's like how cute. he's going. Yeah, he's cute. Let me take this off for a minute so I can sit back. So here we can see, again, the dedication she's put into her riding position, which is nice to see. At this moment, he's going forward in a canter. We don't know what's going on. But as you look at her arms, you can see that that uh, if I was asked what age she was using the most at this point in time, it would be the hand. Because you can see the muscles are flexing and stuff. So she's doing something also with Also this, her. too. Yes. The bit is pulling on in the mouth just a little pulling bit. Pulling on his mouth, yeah. And it could be just be that second in time where you're yeah. asking with an aid. But as we're looking at it, you can see your right hand, you've dropped your thumb down, and you don't have that straight line that you can look down at that Laura was sharing with us earlier. And again, this could be just a second in time. We all do this. Okay, so now as we go down lower, my question would be with her, well, she probably, I, because this is the point, because, you know, it looks like she's sitting nicely in the saddle here. This one looks like quite a, like a different, like she looks more secure. She's got yeah. her seat, she's, her weight's over top of her leg a little bit nicer in this posi yeah. in this photo. Yeah. She's, maybe she's getting ready. It looks like she's really focused on something here. She is. Yeah, so maybe she is getting ready to go over a jump, but uh, her position here looks more secure. Yeah. And this is the point. It looks like, like you said, it looks like she's coming up to a fence. She's for me, as I'm looking at it, she's like the second before she's going to stand up in her stirrups enough to where she'll go in front of the pommel. Yeah. So she's right at the point. This is the point where, Emily, I would say where you lift yourself off too soon. This is where you should be sinking deeper into your lower legs and your calf. And it's not a gripping. It's just you sink yourself. It's like if you sit in a chair, just sit in the chair and feel that movement. You want to think when you feel like you're standing because you may not be aware of it until all of a sudden well, all of a sudden you will now after we're talking about when you feel the urge to go up in front of your saddle is when you need to feel like you're sitting more into a chair which will put you back down over your lower body 
Now it's it's difficult to to see just from a picture because it's just a snapshot in time, right. but it does look like she is tense right. through her shoulders, mm -hmm. and and uh, as you say, uh, she's not letting the weight coming down into sinking down here and sinking down through here and sinking down through here. That's right, but so close. That's why right. it's very, like she her of, leg looks like this little more secure than it was yeah. in the previous picture. That's right. But let's just take a. Uh, but but it's, now in this one where she is right now, that's why I think she's going up into that over position, you know, where she's ahead of the aids. Um, now I forgot what I was talking about. Sorry. Oh, did if I, you look at her knee, it's pointed towards me. Yep. Exactly. I was going to get to that. It tells me that her thighs, the inside of her thigh, which she's so good about using, isn't as effective as it could be. The knee should point more forward, by the way. Which oh, will, which uh, will so forward. right now, she's say, you're saying the knee's coming out towards us. Yes, and it should and be it pointed should be, more forward. Yeah, and I would even think forward and this way. And slide your thigh back. You know, yeah. what you do is you lift your thigh up, you sling it, you know, swing it behind the saddle just a little bit, and then slide it forward so that that muscle. Well, you know what? I found a video of me doing that today, this morning. Let's oh, cool. see if I can find it. Yeah. So lovely. I love this rider. I love the horse. They look like they work well together. Yeah. And okay. So we got this going on here too. The little strap around the wrist. That's just a little thing. I mean, it's not a big thing. So well, I think the, one of the most it, important it, things like, about this picture. Isn't that like an idea or something? Pardon me? Isn't it an idea around her? Or, or what, what do you see I around her? It, I think it's, this is the, um, the uh, no, that's as big as, that's the, the, maybe, but I think it's the strap from the crop. Oh, that could be. I think the big thing from this photograph, uh, Emily, is I would get your helmet fitting properly is a number one thing for me. Or adjusted properly. If adjusted that's properly is. here. So to be clear. Yeah, you're too, you're, this, a good, you're a nice looking rider. You should have your helmet. Fit. Right here. Right. And, and it, that is identified when you get the fitting instructions with your helmet. Right. Is uh, that right there? Here, this should be in front of your ear, like this. Right. And that's how. Well, I guess it's you know have to make sure it's there. So it's got to be around your ear, and this where they join has to be below your ear. Right. Maybe your helmet's twisted, but it's got to be adjusted. And if it's not adjusted for you, then you, sh if it's not your helmet, you should adjust it before you put it on your head. Now, if you took the horse away from this rider, would she land in balance? Well, pretty close, but as you yeah. can see, you know, pretty close, but she's locked up in her position at this second in time. Right. But she's, I, I feel that this is when she's ready to, that's when she's ready to propel herself too far forward in the saddle. So in, you know, and again, with a rider of this level, she is clearly training that horse. If you stay deeper in your saddle by sinking, you'll find that you'll have less resistance from him and you'll be able, him, her, you'll be able to follow the movement better and the connection that you have from the rain will be lighter. I think that, yeah, I, I, that's right. And, and I think if she kind of took a breath, really used that breath to force, push her breath out and and relaxed a bit through his shoulders and arms that he would be a little softer. She would be a little softer and she could ride him uh, right. uh, with him a little bit more. And here's a key thing for you to think about Emily, that somebody had told me and you know, I hate hearing it every time I hear it. You will too, Laura. If you feel like the rain, the horse is pulling on the reins or getting a little strong, it's not the horse. It's you. Yeah. Why is my now. horse pulling on me? Yeah, I know it's not the horse pulling because you you're pulling on it. it. That's right. Yeah. So you know. And that's where with the rider of this level, you're ready to ride more from your seat into the rain. Or the Perfect. seat like express. Thank you for sharing this with us, Emily. You look you it's a you look beautiful together. Great. I mean, what a nice horse, eh? Yeah. 
yes, yes. he's a lovely lovely horse uh what did you say it was an uh thoroughbred i think you said like thoroughbred let's see after writing that i got my first four-year-old hmm. off the track and working hard together beautiful four-year-old thoroughbred off the track keep up the good work it's really good. I'd love to show see some, some up. Pages. Yeah, give us I, some updates in the next month or so. Show I'd us like to something different. Yeah, send a, send a video. I, I'd love to see your progress on this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Love him. Lovely. I, lo what, I wonder what his name is. Something nice, probably. So if you have any questions or comments on what we've been doing, please put them in the comments. We would love to have your questions and comments. Uh, going live here. If you have questions about what we're talking about, don't understand something, or if you'd like to uh, make a comment on this person, love to hear from you. Excellent. And don't forget to share. If you know somebody who's going to, who would benefit from being here, please share it. We'd love to hear uh, that you shared it. Right. Shall we go on? Yes. Okay, next victim. Oh, so here's a, this is just something that I put together to show an exercises. Oh, thank you, Randy, for putting that up. If you pinch with your knees, here's an easy exercise that you can do if you're on a decent horse, a quiet horse, a horse that's going to take it, is uh, sitting up in the saddle, keeping your seat centered in the saddle, and lifting left leg, then right leg, left leg, then right leg off the saddle. This just helps to get your lower leg loose. Well, even uh, more, even more what I like about this exercise, besides the lower leg, is it teaches when you lift your leg up, the rider should feel their seat bone in the saddle. So when you lift so, your leg up, what it'll do, if you lift up both your legs, like the frog position where you do both of them, what happens is it puts the rider on their seat bone. And a lot of people don't realize they're not sitting on their seat bones. They're either sitting back on the fatty part of their rear end or more towards the front. So that's why I like this exercise is it can really be used to isolate. Are you sitting on your seat bones? Are you sitting on your seat bones? And also the other really good reason to use this is it because it develops an independent seat and leg. You can see that both of these riders are, are sitting straight and they're not tipping left and right when, they, when they're when they lifting their legs. When they lift the left leg, it's if you lean to one side or the other, it would be easy to lift, easier to lift your leg. So this forces riders to isolate their legs from their upper body and this helps develop an independent seat. Yes. Also, <laughs> if you if you walk out and canter as you as you develop your skills, and uh, when you do this exercise, if you lean forward, this exercise you can't do it. Right. It's an exercise to help get your seat deeper into the saddle. If you have a rider pinching with their knees, you cannot pinch with your knees and do this exercise. It. Right. It, it, it makes you have an independent seat and develops that seat into so your When into I your started, body. what we did was when we picked our legs up, you slowly pick them up, but when you bring your leg down, you bring your knee down, but you feel your calf sliding down and back right. on the horse's leg. And what it'll do is it'll open up your pelvis, pelvis area where you get a longer leg without lengthening the stirrup and getting to where they're too long. Yeah, just have to make sure you're on a good horse, horse that's yeah. quiet, horse that's acceptable of this exercise. Because some horse, you could see this this horse, the dark bay horse on the right, is uh, kind of looking around saying, what the heck are you doing? So that's a good exercise. Oh, the bicycle. Good. That's what they called this, the bicycle. I mean, well, that's to me is a little different. That was so, you do left leg, right leg, then you do both together at the same time. And then you do lift them off and pedal them like a bicycle. That's the, that's the way that I, I progress through that. But yeah, that's fun to do. And so those of you who are watching know there are a lot of riding schools that they'll spend the first five minutes of the lesson 
just on warm up exercises for the rider where they're doing all these different stretches and touching whatever and that type of thing. This is a nice rider too. Well, yeah, let's take a look at this. This is one, uh, uh, because look, you get the stirrup leather and mm -hmm. you go straight up. So you can see that line. Shoulder, knee, toe. So that's like a, like a half seat type of thing. Yeah. It's, and she's doing the same thing with her hand that Emily was doing. Just she's got a little bit of a flat hand. We call yep. that piano hand. But as as you know what? I, I that would be one of the last things I would notice about this rider. I wanted to show this because of the way the helmet fit. Yes. The brim right the at the top brim is flat, is straight. Flat looking forward. Sometimes you get the brims going this way. And her spurs kind of drop down too there on the back, but we're getting really picky because this is obviously a, a rider at a competition. So the and I wanted to show this too, the, 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 where the helmet yes. attaches and it goes around this rider's ear. And look how snug it is underneath the chin. Mm-hmm. So that's, this is one reason why I want to It's a different kind of a helmet, like the one that Emily has. I think it's got adjustable. And this looks like one that it's preformed. Yes, true. But those ones should be, uh, um, the ones that are adjustable, they should be adjusted. Every ride, because they slide down. Unless you super glue them in place. If you own your own helmet, when but I, I mean, have it's mine, not even It's not even right. it just around doesn't, her ear. Right. right. You can see her ear. The, this should be here. We could say that she's going at such a high speed that the wind is just sucking her helmet off. <laughs> that horse is moving in this photo. Look at how nice he's using his body. Love it. Great job, Emily, to take a racehorse and get him moving like that. That's impressive. And nice and soft. Mm hmm. That's impressive. Yeah, so this, I mean, that was, the, we were being pr pretty picky, this this yeah. rider's, you know. Well, what's happened is she's gone, even at this level of a show, wherever she's at, she's a little bit ahead of the vertical. And the way you can tell is because she has no bend in her elbow. Okay. So she would have, she needs to be able to lengthen her reins maybe two inches. Okay. So you'd like to have her elbow here. Right. And what that'll do is it'll bring her back because if that elbow is straight, yeah, there's no fold, there's no place for her to fold or anything when she's jumping, right? Well, again, that'll happen because you know riders at this level, like Emily, they're training like us. We're training our horses all the time. But as a judge, we don't really notice what you saw right there because we get the first impression. So first right impression was right. Okay, yeah. next. Like uh, the first impression was okay. She's good to go. Do I see somebody who looks nicer than her or whose horse is moving nicer than this one? Because she fits everything. She checks all the boxes for me. I look at the horse moving, tracking Beautiful. up. Yeah, tracking up. This is what we mean by tracking up. And that you get the feeling that she's actually sitting into the saddle. There's tracking up. Yep. That's where the back foot steps into are in front of the footprint of the front foot. And that's a sign when your horse is using its body correctly. That's where they get the spring in their movement. And that's what judges like is when the horses get, just like the rider, they've got to be springy. When they get springy, that's when they start floating and they look like better riders. Getting back to the spring, you can see that this rider, the weight is coming down here yeah. and it's, it's coming down here and yeah. it's coming down here. And she's at, like Emily, she's at the edge, not quite as far at the edge. She's at the edge of getting ahead of her horse's movement. And we can tell that because of the straight elbows. And look at this. The braids? <laughs> they gorgeous. I know. Well, we did say it was a competition horse. I yep. mean, in, the, in a competition arena where they're required to wear braids, I know they're so beautiful. All those braiders getting up at two and three in the morning to braid all those horses. I like her placement on the stirrup. It could be back. It looks like her right toe. I'd like to see it back a little bit further with the stirrup. Cause she's and now, now we're talking like centimeters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like here. Yeah. Cause it's, and that could be why she's, that could be why I get the feeling she's about ready to get up on her toes a little bit more than she thinks she's doing. And that shows in her elbows, not being straight right? in yeah. her elbows being not straight. Being built, uh, bent. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, these are like minuscule things. Well, you know, they send us these pictures and we we're honest with them. Whatever level you are, you can bring your picture and we'll give you steps that you can use to make a difference to take you to the next level, whatever that might be for you. So we go from <clears throat> show ring to looks like this person's schooling in her backyard or in a field, neighbor's field or her field. Right. So again, so very take, similar to Emily. Quite similar to Emily. This rider, to me, general impression, she looks a little tense and stiff. I love her position. She's not interfering with the horse. She's moving with the horse. She's got everything going right for her. Uh, the, the thing that we would like to, to see happen with this rider is, again, just to be a little more uh, springy. You could see, to me, it looks a little mechanical here but we'd like for her to be a little more springy and relax through her knee to let the weight come down into her heel. And we all get mechanical as we're learning our riding positions. So, you know, you will be mechanical as you're learning something new and then it becomes more natural. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So for, uh, this starting at the, at the base here, if we can get, uh, let me see if I can make it any bigger. No, this way. Love those stirrups. I wonder if they're, if those stirrups are comfortable. If anybody uses those stirrups, tell me if they're comfortable or not. Love the way your stirrups placed on the foot. Like to see that her, her, her heels are down and the weight is there. Like to see your heels come down a bit more. And I think the weight is being stopped. That's right. She's pivoting on her knees. She stopped sinking again. She we're in the sinking with the spring yeah. right here. This is where the weight has stopped. That's right. Uh, I mean, her leg is in a decent position but it's the weight has to got to come down here more in a relaxed fashion. Again, right. you could see that her stirrup leather has slipped back, which is another indication that she's pinching with her knee. We'd like to see the front of her leg, the front of her leg and line with the girth. All right. And, and uh, so to keep this pinching with her knees again and working my way up, close bring this down as you can see although that the i think in the next frame of this picture the horse might have caught up with her but right now to me it looks like her seat is over the pommel too much her seat should be over the seat center of the saddle and staying with the horse more and this is, is emily if you're still watching this this is the same thing that you do and that is when you come right to the launch part, because you can see, even though the rider's leg looks like it's correct, she's putting her weight into the front of her stirrup instead right of here. at this moment in time in the launch. Yeah. Launch point. She's standing up in her stirrup, pivoting on her knees and popping right out of the saddle instead of sinking down. So, so if she it's were to bring her bum closer over top of here. Yep. She just needs like to sit this. Down. Yes. That would be better. Yes. Because the weight is coming down That's right. this way. That's right. We want the weight to come down here. That's right. And then her knee and her weight down this way. Yes. And it just takes practice. It's just another position. And to feel it, like we said, just practice getting in and out of a chair. Feel what you do with your body to get up and down. That's all it is. It, you're not changing anything other than, right, Laura? The position doesn't really change. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I love it. Just a minute now. Oh, you can't really see. What are you trying to show? Me getting out up and up and down oh, out of my yeah. chair. Yeah, get out of the chair. Where do, what do you feel when you get out of it? Oh, all the weight comes onto my feet. That's right. So what's happening with these riders, like Emily and, and they're, the, they're going that, this way. that yeah, feel how you have to change the way you're coming out of your chair. Yeah, you have to go this way. That's like, right. It's down. more and more forward and back instead of up and down. Yeah, exactly. So there are these riders that we have today, the ones that we've shown so far, are going up and down 
at the moment of the launch instead of sinking deeper. Oh, you know what, way. Randy? Let's go oh. back to Emily for a second. All right. Uh, Emily, where are you? We didn't give her some exercises that she can do. So, Emily, can uh, exercises that sizes. Emily can do, Randy. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, let me go back to Emily again. All right. So, because she's such a consistent rider. So, for her, I feel she's a nice, strong rider. I'd like to see her do a little bit of work without stirrups, is what I'd like to see. Uh, you know, because then she'll start feeling where she's actually lifting up too high. And while you're doing the work on the stirrups, of course, do our favorite exercise, and that is posting trot slowly going up and down and feel you'll feel in the rising trot that you're doing where you pop ahead in your jumping position so there's a point because you slide up in the in the rising trot your hip kind of swings forward and that's when your knee goes down and you go deeper in your leg you want to feel that and then when you you know you want to feel your thighs when you go up you should feel you see that right here, you're just lifting out your whole seat out of the saddle. So when you're doing the posting, if you tried to do that at a posting trot, it would throw you right out of the saddle. That's uh, what you're doing at the jump that you can feel at the rising trot and correct. I think that's a good, uh, good exercise to do that without stirrups because that yeah. will force the riders not to be able to stand up in their stirrups. That's doing right. it without stirrups, there's nothing to do that, right? If you feel safe on this horse doing that. Yeah, four-year-old off the track, not sure i do that so much, but yes. Well, they look like a pretty good team. Yeah, it looks, it looks good. I agree. You have to be in a controlled environment like a ring and, you know, don't expect. Maybe less in situations, something right. like that. You don't yeah. have to do it for 20 minutes or anything like that. Just do exactly. it. Exactly. You can feel when your legs slide down the horse's back so and when you rise. You to stay give there. yourself a, a feeling of what's happening. That's exactly right. Yeah, because yeah. it'll be easy for a rider of this level because you can see she's disciplined. So I would, I would, uh, in addition to riding without stirrups, I would put the stirrups, get with stirrups, go in your two-point, practicing your two-point position to help strengthening your legs, let the weight come down into your feet, and practice the, what I call the up, up, down exercise. Randy, I think you call it uh, up in your stirrups for six or five, and then sit, trot for six or five. But I call it up, up, down exercise, stay in your two-point position, for two beats and then down for one beat. This helps well, riders. She says that she's not saying to stand up in the stirrups. It's just a phrase. So really in the posting. Go in your two point position for two yes. steps yes. and then down for one step. Right. So go in your two point for two steps, down for one step so that you can feel the weight coming down and sinking down and springing down into your feet and knees and hips and uh, staying in your two point, I would encourage you to put some trot rails out. You can use one or two or three in a row or just place some trot rails out around your ring so that you exaggerate the, the motion of the horse so that you can exaggerate the, the bounce and the spring in your heel, in your knee and your hip. Those are the three major shock absorbers that you need to have when you're riding your hip your knee and your ankle getting your two points so that you do that and feel it feel it you feel should it. feel like like a wave going through your whole leg if you can't feel that wave something's locked up and your job is to unlock it because you won't get to the next level with your horse or with your riding position until you get to where instead of locking up you get springy but again everybody goes through this many yeah. times many times in their riding career because depending on what horse we're on or what we're doing at that time all riders will lock up at times and but this is like another exercise you can do yes lifting your legs off the saddle left leg then right leg excellent exercise if you're on a suitable horse to do it at the halt which is what we're done here you can also do it at the walk you want to do it at the trot too as well if, if you have a suitable horse and can be done at the canter once you develop your your position in your seat. You have an independent seat and balance in the saddle. It's not easy, but, you know, it's an excellent way. I don't know about you, Randy. Did you have to do this when you were learning to ride? No, when I started learning how to ride, we didn't have trainers or instructors. All I had was <laughs> a, I was bareback on a horse. That was it. So we didn't know about these things. We just ran wild through the countryside. So when I was taking lessons... I did this a lot. We spent a lot of time, walk, trot, canter, 
doing this exercise. Walk, trot, canter, walk, trot, canter. Start it at the halt, just like this, then do the walk, yep. then start it at the trot, then we started, started at the canter. I got started to do the exercises, but I, that was, I was probably 21 years old before I even was aware of the concept of any type of exercise like this. Okay. Hey, this rider, what exercises would you do for her? Well, they're basically the same. Same. Exercises. Yeah, the same thing. And for her, you know, it'd be a good thing. She just, you know, that thing that Susan did with the belt on the pelvis, that was just. Oh, right. You what a great exercise. Of, you got to look at some of Susan Harris's stuff. Emily, all of you that are watching this, because what she's done is just the concept of when a rider's in the saddle, it should be like there's an imaginary seat belt that goes yeah. like. Laura drew it there that keeps the rider seat down lower because this seat is like six inches above where it should be. So she would have popped her seat belt. Is yeah, exactly. Idea. And instead of being down, like you could imagine if we put our hands there or we pulled on those ropes, if we could bring her down six inches, the lower part of her body, it would bring her center down over her lower legs. So she would be a more effective and prettier looking rider. And it's a it's an easy change for riders of this level once they get past the habit of unconsciously standing on their toes because you can't see it because their leg looks like their heels are down right until yeah. we get really close and then we see oh they're putting a little bit of pressure on that toe yeah What's so if you part? imagine that there is a a, a seat belt mm -hmm. everybody knows what a seat belt is here going around and then here. Mm -hmm. But we and don't want it to be long. that long. Right. I love we want it to be draw. just. This is so nice. You can draw these things. I on. No, isn't it great? Yes. Be like this. We want it just to be nice and short. Like, yes. Awesome. Yeah. So think that moving your bum towards the center of the saddle. But again, the next frame of this picture may have been a, she may have caught up. Right. Chances are not because she's already ahead of the motion. So she's going to get, she's going to hit the bottom of the fence and be a rock hard. You can see she's already ahead of the motion. Yep. When she lands, she's just going to pile up on her horse's neck. All of her weights on the horse's neck. Well, that's where it appears at this point in time. Right. Even though, and we're really isolating this because that was, oh, here we have another rider. Here we go. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no, no, it's all right. Okay, so, yeah, here so here, here's, here's our, our, uh, another rider. Uh, same sort of thing to a more of an extent than the previous rider, actually. Uh, yeah. you got the pinch, pinch with the knee. Okay, so I like to start at the bottom of the rider because I think this is the important part. Am I showing it? Yes, I am is uh this okay what do you think of the placement of the stirrup on this rider well what's happening here is this rider is obviously not at the same level as the ones that went that we've looked at earlier right and that's okay so she uh, this rider's she's for her level she's doing fine but she's you can see she is clearly not weighted into her lower leg or her center but she's getting to that point like you can see, look at, she's got her hands in the right place. So she's really focused on that. You know, she's looking ahead, but it looks like she's shortening her top body like this, like shortening it this way, right? Her, her yeah. body? Yes. Like her upper body. It's because she's curling up. She's going into a fetal position. So she's drawing her knees up. Her calves are coming off. You see, she's going to grip more and more with her heel there. Yeah. Look at her bitch. Her she's thigh. Not yeah. She's going into fetal position. Oh, there's something else I wanted to say about this previous photo, actually. Now that I remember. Sorry to keep flipping back and forth. Is okay. this. Come on, Laura. You oh, jump cup. Open jump cup. Big deal. Open jump oh, cup. Bad news. So many horses and riders have been injured on those jump cups. If you have jump cups without a rail in them don't do it you must remove the jump cups if there's not a rail in them look at there's two of them down there so the issue is if a horse falls or whatever 
you never know as we know we never know where they're going to land and there's no yeah. there, this is an accident that could be avoided this is an accident that could be avoided exactly yeah. i mean maybe the horse will trip or or uh run All out and that's just a and and it looks like a metal clip yeah metal, metal. Bar, yeah, that'll tear you apart yeah so if the horse trips, falls, or the rider becomes unseated, that's just uh, an accident that, as you right. say, Randy, can be avoided. It should and be avoided. And when you see a horse that's been cut by a metal jump cup, you'll Oof. never be able to jump cup of it again. No. Or person. Right. Even worse. Sorry to do that. That's all right. That's why we like to do because we're just going around and exploring what everybody's doing. With exploring. Business. That's what. Right. Yeah, so this is the 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 uh, the stirrup. Yep. Stirrup. And you can tell with this one that the horse isn't happy with their position either. Well, exactly. Look, he's not happy. He knows she's going to land, and she's just a little person, but he's going to have to babysit her when she lands, which is the level she's at, which is fine. Yep. And, and um, again, we have this uh, pinching with the knee. Because she's standing oh. in her stirrups, locked everything up. She's lock, locked everything up. She's going with the horse. I like that. She's going yeah. with the horse. She's not interfering. Her reins are, are, are nice. And she's actually lower in the saddle than the last couple that we watched. Her seat is over the middle of the saddle. Mm -hmm. That's right. She's just Which is well, fine. It's mm -hmm. just this right here that we need to really work on. Right. Okay, so this position, it's this here. She's pinching with the knee. She doesn't have any weight. Yeah, she has no weight in her stirrup is what no that weight means. No weight in stirrups. Right. So That's what is a little different than this person who has right. weight in her stirrups. That's right. And a little tendency, you can see just barely a tendency to stand in her, and that's such a little thing. Because yeah. the other rider was just really enough awkward. so that she's pinching a bit and she's standing up in her stirrups with her seat over the pommel. Right? Right. This one. She's pinching with her knees. Mm -hmm. Pinching with her knees, no weight in the stirrups. And ducking, you feel you can feel she has overfolded. Just the feeling of the photo, you can feel this, right? Can you feel she's, it? She's holding because mm -hmm. she's this is not happening. Right. But she's she, with the horse. She she's not interfering. That's her right. seat's over the middle. She's looking up. Her helmet yep. fits properly. Yes. You know, there's lots of things good going I, on with this. Yes. It's, it's this is her 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 root problem. And she's a lower level rider at this point in time is all that this is. So this is a rider who's working her way up. And we all all went through this stage. Everybody does. So there's nothing she's doing wrong. It's just as we do our riding, as all of you know, we never stop. We never, so you know, you never stop learning. You never stop working on your equitation. Never. Right? Never. Right. Always. Yeah, exactly. D just so you know that uh, the pictures of the person doing the exercises in that other, that other thing here, this one. That's yes. me. Ah. That's me. Hello, me. I still do it. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm pinching, you know, I need to need to get fitter. So I did some exercises. Okay, so there we go here. This is good. Uh, what exercises would you do for this rider? Well, basically the same exercises that we're doing with the other ones. But with this rider, I would do, I would take time, you know, like 10 or 10 minutes maybe in the beginning after they've warmed up and put them on the lunge line and help her isolate how she can feel if she's in her lower leg or at the point where she tips forward. So that's just a simple thing where they can put their hand, you know, tie the reins in a knot, have the rider just balance with their hands on their hips or whatever. So she can get the feeling of that. All those exercises that we did, with, well, maybe all those exercises that are in riding schools that uh, help develop that independent seat. You know, yes. I, was, I was thinking going through a jump shoot, gymnastics, yes. hands out to the side or you know, dropping the reins, <laughs> holding the reins with one hand, holding the mane right. with one hand as you go over so that she can feel and just focus on her position as she's going through the jump. It's all That's about the awareness. For all of us, 
So when we first start out, it's a mechanical thing, like you were talking about earlier. Yep. We're kicking and steering, and you know we're trying to do that kind of stuff because riders at that level, they're so busy trying to balance on a horse that it's hard for them to control. After you get from that level, you go into where you actually are able to, you you know you know how to use your body to ask the horse to do things right, and you're able to put it in the right place most of the time. But it's a gradual progress. And keep in mind that even the Olympians are still taking lessons daily with a ground person. Yeah, they have some eyes on the ground to help them. I, I totally agree. Right. Excellent. So um, if you have any questions about that, send to put them in the comments here. Love to hear what you have in the way of comments. And also, speaking of comments, I would like to go to my YouTube channel and see if we can see some comments here. What do we got going here? Wrong one. Okay. I got to stop share. Share screen again. Chrome tab. Channel comments. Share. Okay, back here. There we go. Suppose you can't see that, can you? There we go. Okay, Isabel says so. She wants uh, Susan to come back. Yes, Susan Harris is coming back July 1st. Isabel also says this was priceless. Spent thousands on lessons, got more out of this video than I have hundreds of lessons taken. Thank you, Susan, Kelly, and Randy. It's Laura. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Uh, yep. Dr. Aaron Kelly, who we did last week, said, turns out Miss Susan was my trainer. Margaret Kitt's first riding instructor. Margaret lives in Dallas, but grew up in Cortland. She said Miss Susan is her hero. Yes. Awesome. Kaylee wants a video on proper attire for your horse in the hunter ring. Maybe we could just talk about that now. We got a few minutes here. Proper attire for a hunter ring. There, so are, so what, many, there are so many videos on YouTube. All you have to do is do a search online and find out what the current trends are. Yeah. So what I sent to Kaylee, Kaylee was the person on the Pinto last week. Uh, Kaylee sent, sent Kaylee the link to the USEF.org site where it has the proper attire according to the rule book of what you should wear in a USEF show. Keep in yeah. mind if you're showing in quarter horse, uh, Arab, or local breed shows, paint shows, or local regional shows, they may have a little different also spin on what is the requirement for their for their hunter attire. Right. Uh, you have to really look at the rules. If you're competing, you need to look at the rules for your association or your governing organization and find out what they would like you to wear in the ring. And those rules, the judges will enforce. If you're competing. Exactly. Uh, let's see. What does this one say? Hello. Took a few tips on to account from my last review after a few writer. Okay. So here we go here. This is Lillian Equestrian. She says, uh, took a few of your tips into account from my last review. After riding a few newer horses, I got more experience. I'm headed to a show in two weeks and would love some advice. I'll be showing two foot six children equitation for the first time. Excellent. Let us know how you did, Lily Equestrian. Kathy Mix says, great video again. Uh, Amika, okay. Thank you, Laura and Aaron. That's you, Randy. Cool. <laughs> For evaluating my daughter Lauren's photo and video, we were quite impressed at how much you got from the photo and video, and have to say you both were spot on. She's working on her hands. Thank you so much for your lovely comment. I'd like to see an update on that. What would you like? Would you like to see an update on that, Randy? Mm -hmm. 
thank you so much for evaluating my picture and for complimenting my beautiful draft cross mare velvet. It's only been seriously riding for three and a half years and I've been jumping for about two and a half. All of your compliments on my position due to my amazing trainer at ISE Equine Adventures in Texas, Dallas area. Thank you so much, Aaron. We love it. Love to see an update from you as well. Kimberly, Susan is awesome. Emily, just watched the replay. Susan, excellent. Susan was a big hit, Randy. Well, we knew that. Uh, my son, Susan, I, I, I Susan is pretty profound. Pardon me? Susan is profound. She changes a lot of things for riding and for professionals and riding instructors because she has a way. She, for those who don't know, Susan E. Harris is what we're talking about. She has a way of going inside of a rider's body and uh, you know separating everything. Like biomechanics, like, awesome. biomechanics. It's awesome. Yeah. So she's going to be on uh, Jumping Instructors Network on Wednesday, Wednesday, July first. Okay, have anything else you'd like to say, Randy? We're going to wrap things up a little early today. Well, again, I'd like to thank everybody who's sharing their photos and the videos that are shared here. We appreciate you, and we, we have, we're we pretty secure that you understand that we're here to make a difference for you because we've been very clear that we know that every rider goes through everything. It's just what's going to happen, so there's nothing you are doing that everybody else hasn't done, so that's why we know there's a ray of hope out there because if we can do it, you can do it. And thanks to Laura and this show, you have a way to find new ways to be able to make your dreams come true. It's, it's kind of interesting. I, I really like getting into the position stuff. I like to get into the mechanics of it. I think people need help and I hope that the, that we have helped people. We if have you the responses we're getting. You're making a difference for a lot of people. Yeah, I think. And if you would like to have your position or video reviewed, please send me an email, thistleridge at hotmail.com, and we'll get to it. And, Randy, any final words? No, nothing. Just keep working on whatever you're doing because good things take time. Hear that chime. Good things take time. Every time you try to change something in your riding position, it takes at least a thousand attempts before it becomes a habit. Yeah. So we'll see you on the other side of the fence. Exactly. See you on the other side of the fence. Now go use this stuff. Go use this stuff. That's G U T A S G U T S guts. Have some guts. Go use this stuff. Go hug your horse. Thanks now. Bye.